All right, guys, welcome back. Now, um, so this is our first video after getting the news that we will not be having a remainder of the school year. Um, to me personally, that, that sucks. I hate that information, but it is what this is, and it's honestly what's best for y'all. Um, so while it's terrible, we're trying to keep y'all safe. So uh, we've got a few more um, videos to do. We got this one on today will be about uh, Latin American independence. Um, and then we got two big ones talking about imperialism and then um, Chinese and Japanese industrial, industrialization. Two, what I think are two of my favorite things until we get to World War One. Um, so those will be the last ones we do until you receive your packets. Uh, if you haven't got a phone call yet, I'm going to be continuing to reach out to y'all as we are the teachers. But after spring break, you should get a packet with your work for the rest of the year. So. Um, hopefully that is helpful for y'all and understand the information. Um, remember, please, uh, comment if you have questions or anything you're confused on. Um, but let's, let's kind of get down to the lesson today, not waste time. So, and I apologize if there's any loud noise. I got my kid out here. He's playing. Um, so hopefully it's not too big of a distraction for y'all. All right. So Latin America, we haven't really talked a ton about Latin America. All right. Now, whenever we say Latin, okay, um, they don't speak Latin there, but they're from, um, areas that were colonized by Spain or Portugal, okay? And that is pretty much all of South America, all right? There's a few little chunks in the top northeast portion that weren't, but essentially the entire continent, and then all the way up um, North America through Mexico. And originally it included um, areas like California, Texas, uh, Nevada, all that big Southwest U.S., all that used to be Latin America, okay? Eventually the United States claimed some of that land, which we'll talk about. But that is um, what we call Latin America. It's mainly lands colonized by Spain and then um, some of it by Portugal, okay? So Latin America, we hadn't talked about a bunch because they had been under European control since the 1500s, okay? Ever since Hernan Cortes arrived there with the conquistadors to go and conquer the Aztec Empire, um, they'd just been a colony. There hadn't been a lot happening there, so that's why we focused more on Europe, Okay. Uh, most of the major events happened in Europe. Africa was still um, a bunch of smaller independent tribes um, that have great rich history, but nothing on a large scale what we focus on. Asia was, has a richer history, and they've actually got a lot more to cover. But Latin America, just nothing major was happening because they ha were not independent. All right, Pizarro in South America with the Inca, Cortez in Mexico. So those areas get colonized by the Europeans and are under great control. Um, so that's why we haven't really focused on them. Now, there were a couple of different social groups over there, okay? Uh, if you remember that chart from the uh, social hierarchy, okay, you've got the peninsulars at the top. They were people from Spain or Portugal. They're born there. They're ethnically uh, Spanish or Portuguese. Below them, you've got the Creoles, okay? So these would be, they're still ethnically Spanish or Portuguese, but they were born in Latin America, all right? So they were lower rank. Below them is the mestizos that were of mixed race, um, both native and um, European. Then you've got the uh, Africans, the slaves brought in from Africa, and at the very bottom, the Native Americans. So that was kind of that social hierarchy in Latin America. Um, now, the colonists there, okay, especially the Creoles, all right, they're going to be the ones running this. They got a lot of the same frustrations that you hear about in the American Revolution in North America with the British American colonies. Um, they, they, even though they were ethnically the same, some of them were even related, but because of where they were born, they have been treated lesser than some of the other tribe, uh, or than the other Europeans coming over, couldn't hold as high rank, didn't get as many, um, economic opportunities. And so they resent that, all right, especially being limited economically and politically. Okay. And that is going to give them motivation to want to try to claim their independence. Now, um, a major event that kind of makes, that opens the door for this to happen will be those Napoleonic Wars. If uh, We didn't talk in depth about it, but we did mention uh, Jerome Bonaparte, Napoleon's brother, is going to become king of Spain. Okay, so France is going to conquer Spain, um, and it's under French control. Well, the French could care less about Mexico or Ecuador, Peru, any of those areas in Latin America. So it weakens the Spanish and Portuguese uh, control or monopoly of those colonies. Okay, Once the people realize, hey, uh, the people are controlling us, they're not even in charge anymore. Why should we have to listen to them? Um, so that kind of inspires that um, possible revolution there to gain their independence. 
right? Um, and around that time is when the South American movement for independence begins, okay? So it takes about 20 years for South America um, to achieve their independence. And there's two people, two leading figures in that cause that you need to be familiar with. The most important, all right, Simone Bolivar, all right? Um, nicknamed the Liberator, he is going to be the main guy who leads the armies to fight against the Spanish royalists um, and unifies the peoples of those areas to attain their independence. Another figure who is uh, fairly important, okay, Jose de San Martin. All right, um, he kind of works the southern route um, and leads independence there. He's most famous for crossing the Andes Mountains um, to free uh, what is today Chile. Um, but those are the two leading figures. Think of Simone Bolivar, like South America's version of George Washington. All right. He is the liberator of almost the entire continent. George Washington helped lead 13 American colonies. Simone Bolivar liberated an entire continent. It's very impressive. Um, the two men uh, weren't working together, but they do actually come uh, cross paths in 1822. And at that moment is when Bolivar kind of takes over and Martin kind of takes a seat back. Um, but so just each different region, and there's actually a GIF in your notes that kind of shows um, – the timeline for which nations achieved independence first, um, which years and how it goes across that um, time frame. But uh, it takes about 20 years, though, for uh, each different section to attain independence. Um, and little by little, they're able to chip away at the Spanish stronghold until 1826. All right. Uh, South America is successfully liberated from Spain. Now, Spain did not have the entire continent, okay? There's one big chunk, thanks to the Treaty of Tordesillas, if you remember way back with the Age of Exploration, that Portugal had control of, all right? And that was today Brazil. And in fact, in Brazil, they don't speak Spanish like the rest of Latin America does. They speak Portuguese. Um, and now Brazil's movement was a whole lot more peaceful, okay? The king of Portugal had gotten exiled um, during French uh, takeover, makes his way to Brazil um, to safely live there, and then he makes a decision. Do I want to go back to um, Portugal and a uh, more dangerous situation? or, uh, or um, And if I do that, I've got to cut off ties to Brazil, okay? They're not going to accept uh, having, being a colony anymore, or do I stay here and remain? So he eventually agrees to let Brazil attain its independence after spending some time living there. So their movement was a lot more peaceful, but... Spanish colonies, okay, they didn't give it up without a fight. Now, after obtaining their independence, um, there is an attempt to try to unify the entire continent, okay, and that is the Congress of Panama. So Bolivar organizes this, all the different regions that had um, been under Spanish control. He tries to unify all of them and to make one South American nation. The problem is it's, it's such a vast continent. Each region had different interests, um, uh, different things that it cared about. So they did not, they couldn't ever agree on anything. Um, and so the different groups across the continent just can never kind of come together. So there was an attempt to try to have a unified South America like we have the United States of America, but it fell through. So instead, you've got dozens of smaller countries, all right, chopped up. Uh, places like I said, Venezuela, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Ecuador, um, Bolivia for a little while, named after Simón Bolívar. Um, so there is that movement, but it never actually comes to fruition. So and there's a lot of more important details, but just there's so much to cover. We're going to have to cut out some of those, but it is a fascinating and rich story. Now, further up, okay, in North America, you still have Mexico. All right, Mexico is another Spanish colony, but their story is completely cut off from that of South America. Okay. Um, couple leaders uh, in that, Miguel Hidalgo, um, he's a minister who kind of kicks off the Mexican independence movement. Um, he will get killed and then kind of gets taken over by Guadalupe Victoria and Vicente Guerrero, which I probably mispronounced, but they kind of take over the cause after the death of Hidalgo. All right, so a few years after South America starts its liberation movement, the people of Mexico do the same. All right, they want their freedom from Spain. They want to be their own independent nation. Um uh, now, the, uh, an important group, the Army of the Three Guarantees, this is the main army, kind of like the Continental Army for America, that does the fighting against the Spanish Royalists. And in fact, they're the ones who achieve independence um, in September of 1821. They enter into the city, uh, the capital city of Mexico City, which you remember used to be Tenochtitlan um, back when the Aztec were still reigning. But once they were able to conquer this, uh, enter the city unopposed, 
It's a sign that Spain has lost control of the colony. And the very next day, September 28th, Mexico becomes an independent nation. Um, so their movement is a, starts after South America's ends first, um, but theirs is probably a little bloodier than that of South America's. Now, once they become independent, all right, there's a guy that you need to remember. Uh, we'll talk about him with American imperialism, but Santa Ana. All right, so Santa Ana, um, on again and off again for the next 22 years, will be the president of Mexico. Um, he actually viewed himself as the Napoleon of the West, was his nickname. Um, he thought of himself as a great conqueror, modeled himself after him. But on and off, he is the leader of that country. In fact, you probably remember the name because he's the president of Mexico when the Texas Revolution happens. Um, a famous event for that is the Battle of the Alamo, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Davy Crockett, Jim Bowie, uh, Colonel William Travis, who was from Alabama. All right, so we got some Alabama ties there. Um, and if you've never been to San Antonio, if you ever do go, the Alamo is a really cool place to visit. But the Battle of the Alamo was kind of a uh, signifying event in that Texas Revolution. All 300-something American soldiers defending the uh, the Spanish mission get killed. And starts so kind of a rallying cry to, hey, the they're evil, what they're doing, we, they're, they're the enemy, we need to unite against them. Um, and that kind of helps uh, in, uh, ignite that Mexico, or that Texas independence move. So te Mexico loses control of Texas. It did used to be part of Mexico to the United States after the uh, Texas Revolution. And then about nine years later, all right, America is wanting to expand and get all of the continental America, at least west of what we had, and so we ignite a war with Mexico again, all right, the Mexican-American War. All right, now say three-year war, a short victory for us. Um, and this is how we get California, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, that whole southwest U.S. We get that chunk from Mexico um, as a result of this. About 25 years after Mexico becoming independent, they have lost about the northern third or northern half of their country to America. Um but during the Mexican-American War, Santa Ana had actually been exiled, and we sneak him back in, thinking that he would help us um, if he could get back in power, and then we had to fight him. So it's kind of an interesting story there. But that is the story of Mexican independence. Like I said, today's this is one that's going really quick. All right? But do remember the name of Santa Ana and Simone Bolivar and Jose de, San de Martina. All right? They are the most important figures in Latin American independence. Well, Latin America, they get their independence, um, and then they are actually going to continue to be reliant on the West. Okay, so they become free, independent, but they will continue to rely on Europe and North America because they didn't have a foundation built up to succeed, okay? Um, they had always relied on somebody and didn't know how to do, um, take over, take charge. The Industrial Revolution had already happened, so they were well behind um, or it was beginning to happen as they attained independence. So one thing that the United States strong nation nearby them, we actually kind of take a big brother role with the Monroe Doctrine, this uh, American foreign policy. And we're telling European nations, stay out of the Americas. Don't try to go recolonize Mexico or Ecuador or any of that. Leave them alone. Stay out of here. Now, we were we did that because we were worried about if Great Britain or France builds a colony near us, then maybe that could open the door for them to potentially invade us. And we did that for our sake. But we're not strong enough at that time to beat anyone in Europe, so we actually had to get help from Great Britain. Great Britain helps us enforce the uh, Monroe Doctrine, and they actually do so not because they want to be buddies with us. We had just gotten done with the 18 years war about nine years or about seven years before that. But because if Latin America was independent, they could have established their own trade monopoly with those countries, all right? Um, so that they could continue to get rich off them without the expenses of having to control a colony. Um, so that's kind of the first, um, instance of Latin America becoming reliant on the West. Okay. We take advantage of them when they're weak and vulnerable so that we can make a profit of them. This is an early form of colonization. All right. Now, during the American Civil War, um, a few decades later, uh, there is actually rumors of potential invasion of America because we look weak and vulnerable. Um, and they thought, hey, maybe we can go in and colonize parts of the United States, but not just with us. If we're busy fighting ourselves, we cannot enforce the Monroe Doctrine. So it makes uh, Latin America susceptible to colonization. So during that brief four-year period, there's a big worry in Latin America of Europeans trying to come back over and invade them. 
Then in 1904, we decided to get more involved in Latin America with the Roosevelt Corollary to the Monroe Doctrine, um, just kind of adding on to it, that's saying we will involve ourselves in affairs of Latin America, whether they ask for our help or not. So you've probably heard the complaint about the United States being the uh, policeman of the world, getting involved in other countries' wars and all that, that we have no business in. This is kind of the start of that, okay? And we do that because it allows us to keep a financial stronghold there um, and mold that part of the world the way we want. But because of this Western dominance of Latin America, they develop an export-based economy. So they're not where they can rely on just themselves, but instead they have to rely on global trade. Um, they develop cheap goods. A lot of raw resources are found there, and they sell them back to the Europeans. And that system had been entrenched there since the early colonial system, and they just kind of relied on what they had. So for a long time, Latin America is going to be reliant on Europe and the United States because of the old ways. All right. But that is kind of how Latin America attains its independence. Okay, It's a very short history as far as what we have to cover, but it's a lot richer and deeper if you ever care to go and research it more. So that's it for this video. Um, there'll be another one coming soon about imperialism that's very interesting, but I just wanted to go and get this out there for you. Remember, please comment or email if you have questions. All right. Y'all take care.